So the concept of stress transformation seems to be pretty much straightforward because we have some equations that we need to use in order to calculate how much our stress is on different planes. But today I want to look into that conceptually and see how can we use more circle to graphically interpret the stress transformation and the concept of the principal stress and the maximum shear stress. Also, we want to use the concept of more circle to extend in these equations and calculate the maximum absolute shear stress and the maximum in-plane shear stress. So let's review the equations that we developed in the previous lecture. First, we have learned that if state of stress at any point is given, which is shown here, like x and y axis, and rotate that stress element by the arbitrary angle of theta, the magnitude of normal stresses and shear stresses could be determined from these equations. Sigma n, sigma t, and ta and t could be calculated based on stresses in the original plane, as well as the angle of rotation of theta. Another thing that we have learned was the principal stress. Normal stress by rotation is going to transform into shear stress, or shear stress is going to transform into normal stress. So by rotating the stress element, we get to a plane at which all of the shear stresses have been transformed into normal stress. That plane is known as the principal plane or the maximum normal stress plane, which is shown by P. On the other side, by rotating the stress element, we get to another plane which has the maximum shear stress. So in other words, the maximum amount of normal stress has transformed into shear stress. Look at the principal stress and the maximum shear stress. There is a similar term repeated between these two which is shown here by yellow box. Also, we can see another similar term that is repeated between the principal plane and the maximum shear plane, and that would be the first term in the principal stress. The average of the normal stress that is used for determining the principal stress is equal to the normal stress that we expect to see on the maximum shear stress plane. Another thing that I want to highlight from the equations would be the angle that we need to rotate to move from the principal plane to the maximum shear stress is always 45 degree that is shown here or pi over four. So the idea of the Mohr circle is using the graphical method in order to calculate the transformed stress at any point, also calculate the principal stresses and the maximum shear stresses using a circle which is known as the Mohr circle. Let's consider an example to see how can we construct a Mohr circle and how a Mohr circle could be used for calculating the transformed stresses. Consider an arbitrary stress element with the stress of sigma x, sigma y, and ta xy. There are two planes that we can identify, the principal plane and the maximum shear stress plane, and we want to determine the magnitude of those stresses and also the angle of rotation using a graphical method of the Mohr circle. To be able to do the calculation, I'm gonna assume sigma x is 25, sigma y is five, and ta xy is 10. Now we can draw two points in this coordinate system that represents state of stress for this element. Note that in this coordinate system, the horizontal direction, the horizontal axis is representing the normal stress, and the vertical axis is representing the shear stress. In order to make the compatibility with the sign convention that we previously had, the positive direction of shear stress is going to be considered downward. Let's draw the first point, sigma x and ta xy. Sigma x is 25, so I'm gonna count 25 units to the right side, and ta xy is 10, so I'm gonna count 10 units downward. This point is representing sigma x and ta xy, which is the state of stress on the right surface of that stress element. In a similar way, we can draw another point that represents state of stress for the top surface of that element. Stress at that point is sigma y, which is five, and negative ta xy, which is negative 10. This point is going to represent state of stress on the top surface. Now we can use these two points to make a circle. First, connect these two points by a line. The intersection of this line and the horizontal axis is going to be the centroid of the circle. And the horizontal coordinate is sigma x plus sigma y divided by two. And the vertical coordinate is zero. Now we can draw a circle with that centroid. In order to calculate radius, we can identify this triangle. And the vertical dimension of that triangle would be ta xy. And the horizontal dimension would be sigma x 
minus the coordinate of centroid, which is sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2. So sigma x minus sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 would be sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2. From that, using the Pythagoras theorem, we can determine how much is the radius of the circle, and that would be this equation. The principal stress is the maximum normal stress. So where would be the maximum horizontal coordinate of the circle? That would be the intersection of the circle with the horizontal direction, this point. I'm going to show that with sigma p1. What is the other point of the maximum normal stress? That would be another intersection of the circle with the horizontal axis, which is the leftmost point of this circle. I'm going to call that sigma p2. Sigma p1 would be centroid plus the radius of the circle. So that would be C plus R. Now I'm going to plug in the values of C and R into this equation and see what we get. That would be the coordinate for sigma P1. What about sigma P2? Sigma P2 would have the coordinate of centroid minus the radius. So that would be similar to the previous term with the negative sign. Okay, now let's compare the equation that we got here with the equations that we previously used for the principal stresses over here. This is exactly the same as the one that we just got using the graphical method. The first term, which is shown in the red block, is the centroid of the Mohr circle. And the second term that is shown in the yellow block is the radius of the Mohr circle. The other equation that we want to find here would be the tangent of 2 theta p. In other words, how much should I rotate the stress element in order to get to that principal plane. This is the position of the stress element in the xy plane. How much should I rotate this point to get to the principal plane? That angle is shown here by 2 theta p. Tangent of 2 theta p is the front divided by the adjacent. Tau xy divided by sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2. Let's compare that with the equation that we previously had. That is exactly the same equation. So again, we proved another equation using the graphical method. All right, now let's look into the third one, which is the maximum shear stress. Going back to the Mohr circle, the shear stress is going to be the highest point of this circle, which is located on the top point or on the bottom point. So how much would be the vertical coordinate of the highest point of this circle? that would be equal to the radius of the circle. So, in other words, the maximum shear stress is going to be equal to the radius of the Mohr circle, which is this one here. We can see that this is going to be equal to the radius. This is the term that was repeated in the principal stress. Centroid plus and minus the radius. For the maximum shear stress, it is just plus and minus the radius. All right. What about this average normal stress? We know that on the maximum shear stress plane, the normal stress on every surface is going to be sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2. This is also visible from the small circle. At this point, which would have the maximum shear stress, or the other point, which is on the bottom, the normal stress is the same because both of those are having the same horizontal coordinate. And the horizontal coordinate is actually the same as the centroid of the circle. And the centroid of the circle coordinate is sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2. So this Mohr circle is helping us to graphically construct the relationship between transformed stresses in the original plane, as well as the principal stresses and the maximum shear stress.